Good morning everyone, it's Yvonne here from the Aussie Goddess here to do what's cracking for Saturday the 10th of November. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and I've been extremely busy this week with personal readings so um, I'm, I'm eternally grateful but what's so lovely is I'm getting to meet so many of you and um, every one of you has enriched my life. It's just a most amazing thing. So thank you for that. If you haven't subscribed yet, please just click the button. We'd love to have you on board. And yes, my nails are pink. <laughs> but he's always amazed at my nails. Um, if my readings don't resonate with you, however, um, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm cool. Just find another reader. Um, I've changed up decks, so I've got the After Tarot by Julia Masaglia here, and I'll be pulling a card from the Fortune Reading cards from Sharina Starr and Richard Crooks. So I have to have a change. I get a little, I don't know, I think the cards get a little tired, but I get a little bit bored of them too. Um, and for the guys who are having coffee, I've had my cup of tea this morning. I've got my cup of coffee here. Um, Oh, it just sounds amazing. <laughs> Let's get cracking. Okay, what's happening? Alrighty, Queen of Swords. Um, nice energy for the weekend, that's for sure. Um, the Queen of Swords is, you know, always actually it's sort of in this deck, she's a little different. This is why I think you need to change up decks every now and again. So the Queen of Swords is a woman who's learned to speak her truth. She's learned to live in her truth. She's very strong. Um, she is logical like the king, but she still has that little bit of softness about her. Now, this can represent, obviously, the air sign, so Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. Um, so it could be possible you're dealing with one of those three. But in this card, we see her looking up to the heavens with her sword in hand. And um, I always think of the you know that sound like glorious victory that sort of noise um but she's definitely looking up to the heavens waiting for something and she does have her sword to the ready so it could be that you're waiting to tell someone some sort of truth or disclose something to someone that may be freeing liberating or take you to a new place Okay, so first off we have the lovers. <laughs> Very nice. So the lovers talks about a, a relationship with, between two people um, that's divine and guided by above. So it's sort of like in this picture we see sort of like a, I guess, a, a, a visual of Adam and Eve. It's that sort of relationship. It's... Um, I don't even know how to explain it any more than that, but it's two people who equally bond. The thing is, I like, and I've never noticed before, but actually there's a sword above them here. And after seeing the Queen of Swords, I'm thinking there's some sort of, there's some sort of bringing together of two people here. Okay, and then we have the Ten of Pentacles. And I can finish the reading here and say you're going to meet someone and you're going to have abundance. <laughs> Because it looks like somebody's opening up with that Queen of Swords. I don't know if someone's opening up to her and she's like thanking the heavens for that. Or whether she's calling to the heavens to get something in action for herself. Coffee's in the way. Okay, every time I put a new start using a new deck, I have to work out my positioning. <laughs> okay, beautiful. We have the Empress here. So you're definitely ready for a new relationship. You're definitely open. You're definitely in a space where you feel very, very comfortable with yourself. You're ready to birth something new. Um, now, being that we've got this Ten of Pentacles here too, this may not necessarily be about love. It definitely has something to do with love because we have the lovers here. Um, but it could be about just, um, you know, welcoming something new into your life, really understanding, you know, where you are, what you want. That's who the Empress is. She's really sure of herself. She's very natural, you know, very in tune with her surroundings and ready to bring something new in. Okay, and then we have the world. Okay, guys, we've got something going on here because we've got a lot of major arcanas coming out. Um, the world talks about the closing up of a cycle and the... Moving on to the next cycle, that's the main thing with this card. Um, it can also feel like you have everything in your hands. With the Empress card here, it's almost, and the Queen of Swords, 
I must feel like a lot of you just have got up this morning thinking, wow, I can do anything. Like, I just feel so amazing today. And with this abundance and love here, I, I think you're a lot of you are ready to bring in the next stage of your life. Like, you're really approaching this with a brand new set of eyes. Um, the Empress talks about birthing something, but she can also talk about children, you know, um, being pregnant, uh, bringing children into the world. Um, but her pregnancy, her she's full of vitality is what they're saying to me. Um, she's ready to bring something new in and ready to finish something off. So it's almost like here you have the finishing off of something and the starting something new. Oh, I like that energy. Because I feel like for some of you, you've been in this energy. So that might be a very different energy for you. So <coughs> this is showing me past energy here. Um, this past energy of coming out of a time when you... Um, things just weren't going in your favour. There was a, a finishing or closing out of a cycle here as well, which shows in the world anyway. But this is like you get into a point where you really can't you can't go on the way you were that's what that's about and change is needed um three of cups talks of celebration it talks about um you know celebrating a new day bringing in a new life all of those things this is celebrating with family and friends but i feel like here it's almost like a celebration by yourself like it's definitely a renewal Okay, and then we have the High Priestess. Wow. Okay. I think a lot of you here, this is overlaying the Empress in the world. So for a lot of you here, I think you're really, you've really dug deep inside yourself and you're absolutely getting into your intuition now. It could be that in the Queen of Swords that you're learning this and you're taking, because the High Priestess always talks about, you know, not talking, you know, learning to feel your way through the world understanding the value value of your intuition it's about the deeper part of yourself that you don't always access but to be honest with you overlaying the empress in the world that says to me that you're really bringing yourself into balance here so you have this lovely practical side and this lovely intuitive side and you're sort of learning to work with both of them and maybe this is why this cycle is about to finish because you're bringing yourself into a beautiful balance with both. Um, and now you're off to manifest. you are either put something out to the universe in regards to how you move forward here, or you have, you're already starting to understand now how to accumulate wealth. And when I say accumulate wealth, I'm not talking about a savings account. This is about abundance, understanding the value of manifestation understanding you may have had something happen that's taught you it's possible because for a lot of people like they say you can't manifest and I, I don't understand that because if you're not manifesting then you need to go and have a really good look at where you are in your life and what you need to work on because manifestation is part of who we are and what we do um, and surely there's been that time in your life and I remember as a child um, I remember going, I must have been about 10 years old and I remember walking down the street and I remember thinking about someone and the next minute they came around the corner and I was like, oh, okay, I haven't seen you for ages, blah, blah. And then I remember later that day, and this was all in the course of one day, I'd been thinking about, um, for some unknown reason, that I'd never seen a Dalmatian in real life. And then my neighbour on the corner come around and said, I've got a new dog and I went around to have a look. And she had a Dalmatian. And then I know there was a third thing there. Um, and I remember thinking the same thing. And then standing there and thinking, wow, why is it everything I think about comes true? Am I just psychic or am I manifesting? Okay, so the next card out we have is the Seven of Wands. So the Seven of Wands talks, we have two sevens here. Um, the Seven of Wands talks about um, defending yourself. And I feel like with this Seven of Pentacles here, it's almost like you're letting this energy go, um, especially with this High Priestess. So maybe you stop fighting now and you're understanding the universe here in the world and the Empress, that the universe will bring you what you want. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to control. 
because a lot of us are brought up to think we have to control everything we do and that life is about control. And it's not. It's about not controlling. So in order to manifest, you have to let things go and let the universe work on those things for you. You can't control. You can't make things happen. You can try. You can make things happen if you wanted to go and buy um, you know, a box of chocolates. You can make that happen because you can go and buy it. But what I'm talking about is the more intangible thing um, where you are able to just say to the universe, this is what I want, and then just let it go and trust that the universe will bring it back to you. You don't have to work it every day. Because ultimately what you're after here in the Hierophant is having a stability. So for a lot of you watching here, what you're in fact doing is you're bringing this beautiful stability into your life, but you're trying to understand the balance between love, manifestation, intuition, and like that more tangible reality around nature. And it's just all about balance. This whole reading is about celebrating balance, giving up control and bringing in and learning to manifest it really is quite an amazing reading um, so for a lot of you this is what's happening at the moment I think you're trying to bring in love a lot of you are trying to bring in love as some of you are trying to bring in money but you're doing it in a very balanced way you are understanding that you need to have like the earthly side and you need to have the intuition here because you're closing out a cycle here. So I think that you've learned to bring yourself to this point where you're understanding the value. Okay, that's an unusual card because the Beware card comes out, which says, be careful who you trust at this time. Very, very interesting. Why you, somebody's got to hear that. Okay, beware of who you trust at this time. Somebody may be bringing in someone that's not trustworthy. Use your intuition. Be the Empress and the High Priestess. Okay. Oh, here we go. So birth, universal energy brings you opportunity and possibility. That's what we're talking about here. That you're opening up new possibilities by understanding now. Not to, You don't have to control your environment. You just have to trust that the universe will bring you what you want. I'm not saying that you won't question it every now and again or you won't sort of go back into the whole why hasn't it happened yet? But for the most part, you have to give it up and let the universe bring it in. And it may not come in the shape or size that you wanted it. But you know what? The universe works wonders. Have a fantastic day, everyone.